when a, when a fight is coming up, you, uh, it appears to me, deliberately build up a lot of pressure uh, to intimidate your opponent. And it intimidates the people. See, in America, the black people are always taught to be humble. You know, yes, a boss. I see. I'm sorry. Hey, boy, bro. Yes, a boss. Yes, a boss. And never has a slave got up and said, I am the greatest. I'm beautiful. I'm pretty. I cannot lose. They said, that nigga talks too much. <laughs> the nigga needs a good whooping, and they pay money to see me beat. And I go to the bank laughing, 100,000, 200,000, 300. I am the greatest. That nigga talks, he's cocky. One, two, three. <laughs> so like, uh, this is uh, why I build up. Like when I fought Jerry Quarry, I said, the last of the white hopes, you know. But I saw so you this looking, builds up I saw you tension. looking at Jerry Quarry at the weigh-in the other night on television last month, and you were giving him this stare, and he was staring back at you. Was he frightening you, or were you frightening him, or was neither of you frightening the other? Well, I don't think neither of us was frightened, but I'm psyching him, so he lets me know he's not scared. But I don't see him or see me. I see people like you watching, but mainly in America. And they were looking and building it up to be a race war. I said, I said, you don't stand a chance. I'm going to run you out of the ring. And people in Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia, whoop that nigger. He talks too damn much. Hey, let's go see this fight. Quite, quite I don't really hate nobody, but people are so small-minded, it's easy to lead them. You know, you ever see the wrestlers? How there's always a good wrestler and a bad one. Ah, and he sticks his finger in his eye, and the guy shakes it off in two minutes, his eyes clear up, and he sticks it in again, and he hits his back, and everybody hate him. He'll win the first round. And then the second round, the good fella wins, and that's what everybody come to see, though. Bad villain be beat up. I like to be the villain. But the things I'm telling you now won't tell in America on television because they'll start liking me. They say, oh, he's just tricking us. But when I get back to America, I'll be bad. But you, you talk to people in the ring. You appear well, to be... I want to smile, but I don't. You, are, you appear to be talking to... <laughs> What'd you say? You appear when you're fighting. I do. Quite often. To, I do. To talk. I told. What are you saying, or, well, I, or can you repeat that? Well, some of them I won't repeat. Mm. But I have a few things to say, to, not for the public, but to confuse my opponent. Like I might say to a white fighter, listen, while I'm in the clinch, the Black Panther's outside. <laughs> you don't stand a damn chance tonight, boy. Now burn your house down. He look at me, this guy's crazy. <laughs> I have a lot of things I say. Do you ever do you ever get into the ring hating the man you're no, going to fight? No, never, 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 no. Do you get in with anxiety or fear? I'd be I'm nervous because of the talking that I do and I have to back it up. I think about people. <laughs> I'm on a hell of a spot. I'm on a heck of a spot. Can you imagine Blue Lewis whooping me? I'd have to Frankly, I couldn't no. go back to America. <laughs> no. Do, I, do you I, have I got any to... private life at all, Mahan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because all the time and I've I, seen you in Ireland, uh, yeah. up in your hotel and back and forth, people are staring at you, looking at you, wanting to touch you, wanting to talk to yeah, you. Yeah, I have private life. Well, I'm, how, you know, you're a young man of 30. This seems to be to be a perpetual trot around the world that you do with people, you know. Uh, hey. When I'm out, I rest at nights, and when I'm at home, it rest, you know, like they have a saying, a prophet is never honored in his own home. Like when I leave home, I expect this, I'm new. You let me stay here one year and they get tired of me. I'm less than that. You see me every day, I'm coming. Like the Beatles, when they hit America, oh! At home, they were nothing. Tom Jones, and he comes to America, Tom! I mean, like, like when I come out, ah! Oh! When I go home, oh, I'm tired of that big man. <laughs> but the other day so, I saw... As soon as I get in. The other day I saw a small boy <laughs> sparring and boxing with you and so on. Do men ever try to do this? Does a man ever come up to you and say, look, uh, I'll... If he dreamed it, he better wake up and apologize. <laughs> Never no trouble out of nobody. I don't have no trouble. Mohammed, are you a wealthy man? Mm, yes. 
I mean, very, are you a millionaire? Oh, two times. Are you a big spender? Do you spend yeah. a lot of money? Yeah, I'm stopping now. <laughs> yeah, I got too many cars. I got six cars, three of them Rolls Royces, which I don't need. And you know, you come up and pour, and you get something, and this is, I find all of them tell me this, and you go out just to say, I had it. You really don't need it. The newness wears off, you're stuck with it. You can't sell it, it depreciates. So I'm just saving money now. I have three daughters and one son, blueprints for six more children, and we want to <laughs> save all I can. So all I'm doing now, every month is saving at least 75% of my money for the future of my children, putting it away for 15 years. I don't want to touch it. I don't need it. You've said that you wouldn't uh, allow your son to become a boxer. No. Why not? Because it's rough, it's dangerous. It's impossible for him to be as good as I am. And uh, like, uh, I want him to use his brains. I didn't stay in school like I should. I don't have the education. I have common sense. I make it. I don't have no education in books and writing. But uh, I want him to go to school and be a doctor, engineer, or maybe a lawyer, or uh, something, a judge. It's where he can use his brains and while he's at youth give him a tutor, all the teachers he need, put up all the money for all the educations, where they can rely, like for an example, if I should lose a hand, I'm finished. Right. But a lawyer wouldn't, or a doctor wouldn't, see, necessarily. So I want him to get his brains ready. A lot of boxers do end up broke. Are you better advised than other boxers as far as investments are concerned? Well, I'm lucky that I have these before me to take for an example. Mm. And, uh, uh, I've been, I have made, mainly Herbert Muhammad, my manager, have wise advisors, the son of our great lady Elijah Muhammad. And uh, most of them were just brutes and they didn't have a brain and they had people, they were victim of the times using them and they couldn't box and handle the business too. But I found out that many friends and people, they come to you wanting to borrow money. This happens every day. 90% of my mail from all countries is loan me some money. Or my daughter's sick. I'm trying to go through school. I want to come to America or this or that. I found out that the best thing to do is to have somebody to send them to. Mm -hmm. And he'll tell them that he can't, the budget is low. The, the other day I heard uh, <coughs> Harold Conrad refer to you as the wizard that you've got a lot of wizardry in you, that you can do a lot of things, you can see into the future, that you can put a hex on people. Well, I can take, for an example, to show you my power, some silver paper. Uh, Cigarette silver. paper? Yeah, and yeah. I can uh, wet it and fold it and hand it to me. Let me just, and you, this is, this is, this is, uh, this is gold. I don't know if this will work. You have any silver paper? You might have some silver. Hold on a silver. second. Let me see. Somebody. Tom, you haven't got any. Oh, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Here you go. I can take this right here, for example. And uh, you tell the people the truth. If it don't work, I don't know. Maybe I'm thousand. I can take this here. And I can uh, fold it up like this. And now you can give me your hand. I can say you just watch me and you concentrate. That paper's gonna get warm. So warm until it'll start smoking. And that paper will keep on till it gets hot. Do you feel it? Oh, do I feel it? <laughs> can I just see it for a second? Somebody from the audience? Got a lady coming real fast. Any lady, come here. Any lady. No. Here's one. Here we are. Come here, young lady. Here we are. Just take your hand and hold this. Quick before it cools off. Is that hot? It's quite just, hot. Just I'm not fooling. It. I'm not hold fooling. It. Is it hot? Yeah. Is it hot? Yeah. Okay. He's a wizard. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's still hot.